The digestive system is composed of the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine and the large intestine or colon. The esophagus channels food into the stomach, where the digestive process begins, before it enters the first part of the small intestine. The duodenum is around 25 to 35 centimeters long and breaks down the larger particles of food. The small intestine continues another six meters into the jejunum and ileum, breaking down even more nutrients to be absorbed into the body. The small intestine continues into the colon, the first part of which is called the cecum, to which is attached the appendix. The appendix is a small tube, around 10 centimeters long. The function of the appendix is still unknown, but it can be removed without affecting the normal functions of the human body. In the remaining portion of the colon, any liquid in the remaining food is absorbed before it is passed through the rectum and out of the body. Appendicitis is caused by an inflammation of the appendix and requires swift treatment with an operation called an appendectomy. The exact cause of appendicitis is difficult to identify. There are a variety of potential symptoms of appendicitis, but the main ones are pain and soreness around the belly button and the lower right abdomen. Other symptoms can include feeling sick and fever. If the appendicitis is not treated, it can cause complications, such as a burst appendix, which can lead to infection that, if left unchecked, can be fatal. From the onset of symptoms, it can take an adult two to three days before the appendix bursts. In children, the process is much faster, and in very young children can be as short as 12 hours. When you arrive at the hospital, you will be told to avoid eating and drinking, as you may require an operation. Before the operation, you will be asked to shower with a special antibacterial soap. In some cases, you will be given a dose of antibiotics to boost your ability to fight infection before the operation. If you are on birth control pills or have a risk for blood clotting, you will be given an injection to prevent blood clotting. The operation can be performed in one of two ways, either through keyhole surgery with the help of an instrument called a laparoscope, which allows the surgeon to see inside the abdomen with a tiny camera, or a laparotomy procedure, where a larger incision is made over the right side of the abdomen. The operation is performed under general anesthesia, where you are unconscious during the procedure. The operation usually takes between 45 and 90 minutes, although longer operating times are possible. With keyhole surgery, a small incision is made at the belly button where the camera will go. Then, normally, two additional small incisions are made lower down the abdomen. The abdomen is filled with gas to create room for the surgeon to work with. Special sealed tubes called trocars allow tools to be used inside the abdomen without releasing the gas. The surgeon then removes the inflamed appendix using instruments through the trocars. In the case of a laparotomy, a single incision around 7 cm long is made in the lower right portion of the abdomen. The surgeon then parts the stomach muscles to get access to the inflamed appendix and removes it. In both cases, once the appendix is removed, the incisions are closed and the wounds are dressed.
In the case of keyhole surgery, you may feel a pain in your shoulder after the operation. This is a side effect of the gas used in the procedure and will usually go away in a day or two. You will be prescribed medication to relieve pain, which is commonly worst the first few days after the operation. Ordinarily, you will be discharged from hospital the day after the procedure. You can expect to be off sick for at least a week, depending on how physically intensive your job is. You may need to have your stitches removed after 7 to 10 days, depending on the type which were used. It is recommended that you return to regular physical activities after the operation to the degree that your pain allows. Your stomach muscles should be fully recovered after around four weeks.